New video from Giguk about Mushoku Tensei. Surely there's not going to be any controversy. Surely we won't be rage clicking, you know, baiting, right? Let's begin. Let's Mushoku begin. Tensei season mm. one was like. Yeah. Oh, so Don't forget about Orsted. Oh, oh yes, Orsted. Oh, and now season two. Bro, this bread animation was fucking crazy. This bread animation has more animation budget than some actual entire animes recently. Look at this shit. Oh my god. God. And now season two was like, all right, let's see what Rudius is getting up to now. How's it going? Erectile dysfunction, rom-com, slice of life. Diagnosed with erectile dysfunction. It's not a joke. Erectile dysfunction is not a joke. It is a joke. He ain't getting up to anything. Are you waiting to receive my limp penis? When you've watched anime for a long time, <laughs> what? you start to think you've seen it all. The same tropes, the same plot developments. It starts to become rare for a series You're right. to explore something you haven't seen some iteration You're right. before. So color me Giga cooking. And we've seen all these different tropes. So many things have been repeated onwards and onwards. And we've seen it all. But then we see Mushoku Tensei season two. And it's an entire fucking arc dedicated towards fixing his limp dick. And it was still good. That just speaks to how good this show is. If you can cover an entire fucking season covering slice of life, slice of life shit with fixing erectile dysfunction, you know that this anime is fucking really good. Is the video a little quiet? I'll, loud, I'll make it loud of it. Be surprised when Mushoku Tensei returns, coming off the back of introducing one of the most immersive worlds and genre defining stories yep. in Isekai to go. Yep. Hey. Wanna Peak. see what happens when the hero can't get his PP hard? Doesn't work. He gets fucking slapped and he gets dished again. We've had some banger anime this year exploring some pretty unique topics. Oshinoko Ooh. highlighting the darker Ooh. sides of the entertainment industry. Hell's Paradise introducing us to a beautiful but deadly world. Mid's Paradise. Just kidding, I enjoyed his Paradise. Us the joyous fantasy every wage slave needs. Mashal, Heavenly Delusion. I'm about to that try season to was good. Sure that a guy attempting to get a hard on for 12 episodes tops all that. But before yes! that, a word from today's sponsor. Guys, what is it? What's the sponsor? One out of ten men are likely to go bald. Is this a balding? Is this a balding ad? That's a thing of. Oh, never mind. This isn't an actual ad. Never mind. We'll watch it. Sponsor. He's memeing. He's memeing. Oh, Chin Tensei! <laughs> God, okay, that's actually good. That's actually right, good. Let's do the real sponsor. <laughs> right, okay, what's the end? Today's actual sponsor, guys. If you've been on nah, buy AirPods instead. Nah, fuck these. Buy AirPods instead. I'm sorry, Giga. Buy AirPods instead. AirPods, AirPods. The new AirPods, third generation, USB Type C port in the bottom, bro. Fuck the Raycons. AirPods. This is not sponsored. Introduce us to one of the most immersive worlds I've ever seen in anime. It was a beautiful, carefully crafted place, rich with lore and yes. history that was full of very life. deep. This wasn't just an isekai by name. It gave us a new world you felt you could truly get transported. It was the isekai, one of the strongest points of Mushoku Tensei, the world building, the immersion. You watch this show, you feel like you're in it. And season two, I felt like I was getting erectile dysfunction. Complemented with character writing. You remember this scene, guys? Remember this scene? Who remembers this scene? Wait, wait. Who, who, who remembers this scene? Anybody remember it? This is what Zen has figured out. Hold up. Why is our maid pregnant? Why is she pregnant, Paul? What did you do? <laughs> ...with character writing that filled the place up with people oh, that God. felt as alive as this world did. Seeing Rudy's journey through the world truly felt like you were going on an adventure with him. Getting yes. swept up in the places he went to and the people he encountered. So much so that when that part of the journey came to an end... Ooh, this is the beginning of the fucking erectile dysfunction. She left her hair here and he said, Your stroke game was weak. I'm out. And I'm taking Ghislaine with me even though she's not here. Bye-bye, little dick mother. Fucker. And you felt as empty as he did, leaving us off with him learning some harsh lessons as he starts his next phase of life. It was a magical journey, so yep. season two had some big shoes to live up to. What adventures was Rudy gonna go on now? None of what places were we gonna visit? What new world shattering developments were we gonna see? Erectile dysfunction. Uh, let's make his dick not work. Yep. Yes, if you haven't heard, the yep. made the brave decision to make Rudy dealing with erectile dysfunction a sizable plot thread to the entire It season. was the entire I'm plot thread. People pretty split about it. So I'm here to argue that this arc not only encapsulates everything that Mushoku tends to Gotta just appreciate Edina Deez's belly here for a second. Mm, mm. The one thing, the one thing. Why are the elves in this show so not stacked? Every other elf in the different animes we're watching, they're so fucking stacked. But Sylphie and Edina Rize, you know what? You know, you know what Luke said about the Grey Rats, right? They like voluptuous women. And I'm afraid that Luke is not turned on by Sylphie. Because she's not voluptuous. He encapsulates everything that Mushoku Tensei is about, but why memes oh. aside, I still enjoyed the hell out of it. <sighs> Here I am.
Mm. I reached the point in my career where I'm somehow arguing for erectile dysfunction. I think this my anime list yes. review sums it up yes. pretty well. If you're too busy to read the whole summary, here are two points for my review. Bad uh. animation. No. Bad no. No. <laughs> <laughs> if if no. you're gonna give it a seven after saying that, that means the anime is really good. Granted, I know going to my anime list for serious reviews is like asking crypto oh. bros for financial advice, but these are pretty much the sentiments I've seen floating around. So let's tackle this. First okay. point. Bad animation. Michonne was it Tensei though? Season one was an absolute animation masterclass in almost yep. every department. Bread animation. A lot of fears from fans going into the season because some of the key staff members in charge of making it look this good was moving on to the other projects. And oh, oh wait, wait, what are the projects? We shook a Tennessee season two trailer revealed that new cube cameras at Studio Bind. I don't know what Studio Bind's covering, but that's kind of sad. The people that all animated bread animation just left, huh? And to be fair, it is a slight downgrade. I it did it. I couldn't even to tell. The point of being the cinema quality pierce the resistance the first season was, but bad. Congratulations, we've downgraded from the Last of Us remake on PlayStation Five. To The Last of Us on PlayStation 4. We that's might have pretty experienced much the same. a new season of anime that's felt like it's had a drop in quality before, but if this is bad animation, Seven Deadly Sins fans are on goddamn soon. Okay, I haven't seen Seven Deadly Sins, but I do see memes of this and like really awkward, like, uh, for example, like, look at this. Seven Deadly Sins, um, bad animation meme. Like, there are some- <laughs> Like, how is this a real fucking thing? What do you tell- what, like, what? How is this a real panel? What happened here? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> There's some other bad things too, right? <laughs> no way! No way! <laughs> this is bad animation, bro. This is a PowerPoint presentation, bro. What the fuck happened? Like, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I want to watch this show, but I have seen memes of this. And I'm like, what the fuck happened, bro? <laughs> Season of anime that's felt like it's had a drop in quality before, but if this is bad animation, Seven Deadly Sins fans are on goddamn suicide watch. <laughs> they aren't already. Considering the production of this. Hey, Seven Deadly Sins got like a new anime this, this season, right? It's like a spin off story, I think, covering some different character. I hear that's gonna be actually good though. It took half the time and we didn't have to wait three more years in between. That's why it's called Seven Deadly Free. <laughs> seasons i am more than happy actually good going to be the quality going forward because mishoku tensei was never just about the amazing animation which brings me to the next point bad arc to this topic i like to talk about how to fix limp mode limp mode wires engines i don't know i think this is about some kind of different driving engine but okay was mishoku tensei was it a bad arc some people say that they personally didn't like season two even if they watched it because it was so like, Mushoku Tensei Season 1 was so immersive, the world building, learning about the 10 different powers, like, everything was so peak fantasy, and then Season 2 was, like, slice of life, rom-com, you're at a fucking school trying to figure out how to fix erectile dysfunction. Now, there are some hype moments, like, Body God is showing up, that was super hype. Even Rudy soloing the dragon in the first, you know, in the beginning of the season, that was really hype, you know? And then, like, there was obviously some really funny moments that happened from erectile dysfunction, but this is not the Mushoku Tensei that people are expecting. Granted, we did talk about the mana disaster, the different methods of teleportation, getting a lot of plot lore in form of, like, Nana Hoshi telling us all the important shit, right? That was good, but for the most part, I think people are kind of let down on what they were expecting from season two based on what we've seen from season one i kind of understand but even then i still had a fun time and that just goes to show that if an anime could invest an entire fucking season on this downtime just like low energy limp dick rom-com limp dick fix mode i think that just means that the anime is so good that you can carry a show with it all right this one might take a little longer obvious pp memes aside i think a big turn off people have had is that there just weren't a lot of major developments this was a season that really slows things down it takes some time to explore its own still characters. got development some new interesting lore drops that set things up for future events not always so got like development Vinland saga earlier this year the pacing crawled to a standstill in favor of rudy living his life as a young adult now and being more flaccid than oedipus waking up in an <laughs> orphanage but don't get that reference, I probably should well, though. Well, Villain Saga already proved that you can completely change things up and turn into a slow-paced... Midland Saga. Farmland Saga, I'm just kidding. ...character drama, and people can still come out of it acknowledging that it's a goddamn masterpiece. So, yeah. what's the difference? Well, Thorfinn's character arc never led to this. Hmm? What? Am I getting spoiled here? What is this? 
I have. <laughs> but I would argue that the slower pace of got me. storytelling he has got always me. been what sets this show apart from everything else. Mushoku Tensei doesn't have the cool philosophical lines or our main character you want to go off and brag about. But what it does have is a story that feels so innately real it's almost uncanny. Events hmm. and time progression play out in a similar Is Giguk trying to let us know that if it feels so real that he can sympathize with that he has? A little bit of ED, well, maybe? You'd expect from two in life. Episode by episode, you don't think much happens, but you know how if you see someone every day, you don't really notice any change with them? And then yeah. one day you look back to a picture of what they looked like five years ago, and it's like, yeah. what? What? That just looks pretty much, well... Better lighting here. This is like a studio picture. The, the beard, but what, what, what is this one? Bro! This is peak like 2010 era, bro. <laughs> this is like the fucking anime haircut Sasuke style putting his gel fucking bang one way. <laughs> anime haircut emo days. <laughs> bro, it looks pretty good. I, I think it looks pretty good. During, during that time, this was the haircut, bro. And like, it, like if I could go back like, I don't know, 10, 15 years or something. And like, I, I don't know. I saw that haircut. I'd be like, God damn, why did you do that haircut? Teach me, bro. <laughs> what? When the fuck did Rudy become a ripped teenager? Yeah. Characters react. No, they've been actually kind of like showing that Rudy has been building his foundation, that he's getting jacked, like bigger and bigger, but also like showing him like still doing like swords training. I really want, is this like foreshadowing that Rudy later on, he's not just going to be able to use magic really strong, but like be competent with swords. He is competent, but I want him to actually use swordsmanship in like an actual battle. I want this to actually lead towards something where he uses it in combat. It's like, holy shit, he's like a magic swordsman? Rudy become a ripped teenager. Characters Whoops. react and treat each other like people, real people. Every single person, regardless of if they sold give you that? 100 lines My man two, sold that? sense that they're on their own personal journey as mean- Remember here? This is the part, and I forgot his name right now, but this is the part where Rudy came and then she says, Sarah and green hair guy is dead. And at that point, I was like, oh no! Who's the green hair guy again? I had to actually think like, who's that guy again? And it was like, oh, I feel so fucking bad. And I felt, and then he said, actually, Sarah might be alive. And I was like, oh, I don't give a shit about the green hair guy. I'm feeling so bad. I don't even know his name. I didn't give a shit about his death, but it come on, who knew him? It's this commitment to realism that makes it such a joy just to be in this world. Meaning even the smallest developments mm. or character actions hold far Ugh. more weight than they usually would. What would need to happen in a man's life I almost thought that was Zoldat. See, Zoldat and Paul really look alike. To learn how to forgive. Zoldat is literally like Rudy's big brother he never had. What happens when you're so hung up on an ex that even your dick stops listening to you? It's <laughs> embarrassing. It's awkward. It certainly isn't cool, but that's exactly why it seems so oddly realistic in a way few shows could get away with. Because it was so on point for mm -hmm. a person like Rudy. Rudius has certainly been a divisive character for anyone watching the show. He's that done I... to turn a lot of people off. That was a controversial episode. Oh okay. yeah. Very much continues. The, the shrine. The second season. The so relic. One of those people that find it morally reprehensible. Mm. See, that was such a deep emotional scene, but I couldn't just. I just started laughing because he started crying into a pair of panties. I'm like, I can't take this shit seriously. Guy act like this, and you can't fully invest yourself when this guy is meant to be the protagonist of the <laughs> yeah. story. Yeah. Understandable. Hard to, nice protect, hard to defend them at times. Not change your mind. Rudy is perverted. He's weird. He's downright creepy. But yeah. let's be real. Do yeah. you really think that a previously shut in? Exactly. Like, it makes a lot of sense as why he's so creepy. Like, it, it fits perfectly. But people say, like, where's his character development? And a lot of people say he has a lot of character development. But then he still does some lewd shit that you can't really defend. And it's like, I don't know, man. He's addicted virgin. He's jacking off right now. Transported to a fantasy he jacking world off there? without the same moral standards and repercussions of our modern world is gonna act any different? Here's what happens when a horny weeb gives in to all their intrusive thoughts. Mm. You might not keep anyone like Rudy around you, but you've probably encountered someone that's come a bit too uncomfortably close to walking down his path. Which is why to yeah. me, he seems just as real as the characters around him. This is the arc. Where no, he does feel very real. Like, he feels like a genuine character. There's a lot of complicated people that has a lot of deep-rooted issues like that that can't seem to move forward. And, he, and I definitely can sympathize with them, but you can still sympathize and condemn his actions. We get to see him deal with depression from something that has nothing to do with his previous life. So what earth shattering thing could be affecting him? Bullying? The gruesome death of a loved one? Nope. Girlfriend what? troubles. Oh, cheer up, mate. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Uh -huh. Oh! It's trivial, but that's why I respect the decision <laughs> to spend a sizable amount of time. At this point, Zoldat just took the hits because this is before Zoldat kind of knew what Rudy was about, right? He thought that he was just a cocky kid just flaunting his powers, but Zoldat at this point was like, oh, this, shit, this kid's going through it. 
And his punches don't actually hit hard anyway, so I'm just gonna sit here and take it. And I'll be your therapist right now. What a bro, Boys, dude! We forget that even though he was an adult in his previous life, just how emotionally immature he is. We often like to dismiss events. People use his emotional immaturity as a talking point when defending his actions against like, like people say, even though he was like a 40 year old man, technically his brain never matured past the age of 16. Therefore he can get on with 16 year olds. It's some of the talking points that I see on the YouTube comment section. I'm like, this is some insane mental gymnastics. That happened in our young years as dumb teenage angst that we've grown past, but shit, man. So much of that stuff sticks with you, even if you don't remember it. Maybe your parents said some offhand comment that one time or- You're never gonna be nothing. You're just like your father. Teacher shouted at you for something you did, or, you know, a crush said something mean to you in your- I'm sorry, I don't see you like that. You're just a friend to me. I'm sure you can find someone better, but- <laughs> Friend zoned! Vulnerable moment. Don't go getting the wrong idea. I only came up here because I felt obligated. She only said that to defend her feelings because she got let down because if a girl can't get a guy hard, then it, how does it look on her? It's just like, am I not hot enough? Am I not attractive enough? You couldn't get hard because you didn't find me attractive. I feel bad now. Now I'm going to say this to protect myself. But God damn. Oh, we did Sarah so dirty. You what? It's moments like these that can shape the way you act Ugh. going into adulthood. And you probably don't even realize how much you internalized it until it's Ugh. way too late. And you can see that it internalizes through his fucking limp dick. Through every phase of Rudy's struggle with the scars he's carried on from not just his previous life, but the one he has now as well. Guys, in our most loneliest and desperate moments, we'd like to think that we're fucking Hit the gym. Gosling in our Hit the gym. Sigma grime set. In a dark corner, but uh -huh. let's be honest, we're probably closer to Rudy in our darkest times. At first, yeah. he just keeps to himself and just deals with it finds other things isolation to him gets called out doesn't say anything eventually lashes out tries to forget his frustration that girl was so nice mm, mm. relations with a girl mm. makes things worse alienates the people around him before erupting in the most toxic and self-destructive way possible yeah this felt very real though this honest i like you could really relate to it even though events of this is, it's still in a fictional world but stuff like this it felt so real you're the worst I never want to see your face again. Oh. <laughs> so that's like, this shit's awkward, bro. <laughs> Yikes. Oh, he's trying to kill himself here, dude. This is the type of Holy shit people shit. spend years working through. Can you hasten that development for a fictional story like this? Sure, if you want the instant gratification of seeing someone overcome their internal issues, but like life, there is no easy way to go about this. You can tell me that time has passed, but it's a mm. whole other thing to make me feel the time and effort it takes to get through the smallest bit of your trauma. This is the commitment Mishoku Tensei makes that few series are willing to do. Kigo, this is getting too deep. Where's my jokes at? I'm gonna, I'm gonna start crying Take now story you normally see this person with some kind of flaw and through a character arc they realize Tokyo this flaw overcome it grows a character and it never becomes more than we haven't again. seen yet that particular character arc has now come to an end and you know Gara. it's great it's satisfying it's by the book good storytelling but in reality life isn't always as smooth as fiction is Your yeah mate doesn't get you might never get these developments. Shit just might stay fucked forever. Your single monologue one day and then instantly all the bad things you suddenly realize you want to change about yourself are yeah. immediately fixed. Even if you recognize that you want to change, it takes time. It takes effort. It, it takes may never be fixed. People try, get better, relapse into bad habits, try again, spiral even further down, climb back up, fall back down again. Years can pass and some people might never find that drive to keep trying again. Life isn't always a straight, linear upshot of a journey. And it's that's a what makes curve really everywhere around. so captivating. It takes the time to show you every aspect of his life journey, not just the parts where he takes a positive step. Some episodes he takes one step forward. That's right. In some episodes he decides to gonna, you know, go go buy child slaves. Some episodes he tries to get the child slave and start doing underage drinking. Some episodes he might even be racist towards the cat girls. Ooh, a lot of controversy. Some he takes three steps back. There'll be a four episode stint where he makes no progress and doesn't grow as a human being at all, but it has enough faith in you to stick with it because it mm. wants you to be here for the long game. We show could Tensei's newest arc might not have the world shaking plot developments or the high we needed a turning point man where is my turning point intense the action scenes but it made me realize what made the series truly special and world building source material character so development damn long immersion is someone's life story and it fully commits to showing you the entirety of it through every up and down through the fast years and the slow years like 
life itself. And because yeah. of that, it feels so intimately realistic. You forget that this is a fictional story set in a made up world. At some points, it felt like I was watching a real biography about a person that really existed. Sometimes I thought it had more in common with an episode of Terrace House that just happened to be set in another world than your typical fantasy story. That's the immersive power this series has. The only series yes. I've ever encountered. That and because of this immersion, you can dedicate an entire fucking season towards erectile dysfunction at a Magic Academy and still do well. Can simultaneously drop my jaw to the floor. I needed something like this in season two. The god damn, I wanted a turning point. A near-death experience while also making me feel genuine emotional gratification at the sight of a bro popping a boner. By the end of this arc, Rudy still might not be a good person. He might not be the protagonist that deserves. But our he's trying. Just yet. But you he's know trying. What? It still feels good to see a guy get even the smallest W in their lives when they yeah. worked hard to get it. And, th and the W in this context is his dick rising up yet again. That's ladies and gentlemen, is why erectile dysfunction is the greatest thing to happen to storytelling in the history <laughs> of Isekai. Agreed. True. Sir? Yes. This is a Wendy's. Oh, you just oh. said that. Being hard <laughs> could open a lot of doors for you. Uh-oh. Proving you're hard. Yes. Could open a lot of doors. I'm hard right now. It's hard to go to work with a Bad anime. Ah! Hey guys, hope you enjoyed. 7 out of 10 arc? Well, I think he's just memeing on that, you know, a different video. But give Kigook a like. Great video. People shit on Mushoku Tensei a lot. But I think for season 2, for what it was, compared to season 1, obviously not as hype. Not as many turning points, right? But still, fantastic piece of work. And we still have finished with season 2. We still have core 2. And again, the fact that this video... Sorry, that this, this, this season was able to dedicate an entire fucking 12 episode, 13 actually, towards Rudy fixing his dick and still people still love this shit. It's just a testament to, to prove how good Mushoku Tensei is. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, child slavery, underage drinking, racism, kidnapping. But at the end of the day, we're just kind of memeing along and we love to see Rudy get doubles, right? Fantastic anime. And I think people should watch Mushoku Tensei.